to students. Um, this is my first time doing this, and I'm going to try to do short lectures in order to convey a little bit of the energy that I usually get to convey in class while we are talking about English literature. Right now, English 1B, we are reading Edmund Rostand's Cyrano de Bergerac. This is the play that was published and produced on stage in 1898, um, but set back in 1640, far back in the sort of mythical, historical time of the Three Musketeers. Um, Alexandre Dumas's The Three Musketeers is a beloved French novel. Came out in the early, uh, mid 1800s, I believe. I should know that date. Um, and so the French audience could know the context, um, could understand characters, could understand what a musketeer was, could understand the, the code of honor, the sort of thing that I've tried to set up by doing a later piece, The Duelist, as you know, um, to help us with this play and then also with the Shakespeare play, which we may read before the end of term, depending on how the coronavirus is working out. Now, um, so Edmund Rostand is giving us a play and in the play, we have to figure out how the um, tone of voice works, how the characters work. We have to figure out how um, stage action would work, which is one reason why I'm also recommending that you watch um, parts or all of the two film versions. The 1950 Jose Ferrar uh, version of Cyrano de Bergerac is quite good with, um, I mean, it's stilted acting style for our time, but I think it is quite good with seeing just how the duels might be played for both comedy and drama. Um, Cyrano beats Davert how many different times in the film version? And that is, that's, that's the magic of um, stage production. In this case, cinematic, but stage production where you bring to life um, the... You know the words on the page um we have to do that with our imaginations and we've been practicing that you've been practicing that your whole lives and um well you know we'll see how that goes now the thing you'll notice if you look at that 1950 film version and our play okay the same translation which is good but if you look at the um play you will notice that we start differently the film puts us in the theater and quickly moves to introducing the main character, Cyrano. The play itself, however, when you read it, we walk into, um, well, we do time travel. Remember, I like to talk about that with anything we read. We have to do a little bit of time traveling. And we have a threshold. We cross the threshold as we leave our world and we enter this imaginative, imaginary world. Um, and Rostand does this by um, having us enter the area of the stage with various characters that we're not going to see ever again. Um, some rogues, some soldiers, some school children, boys who are going to play pranks. Anyway, walks us in to get us slowly moving from 1898, 2019, 2020 into 1640 we then get introduced to christian first which is different from the 1950 film and we see that christian is there because he has a crush on a woman that he has seen there at the theater and he wants to find out who she is okay um he ends up having to leave to help a friend and think about that isn't this a great way to set up a uh, a positive character I mean he he's there for love but he's there for friendship and so he ends up having to leave because remember he catches that cut purse trying to steal his handkerchief and a handkerchief was a rather specialty item um, lace takes a lot of work and so it's if good lace around a handkerchief is good cloth it takes a lot of work to produce we don't have mass production really here and so that is actually something that pickpockets would go for Anyway, and also the purse, right? His wallet in his pocket. And so Christian catches the thief, 
the thief trades his liberty, well, wants his liberty, and so therefore trades news, the fact that his drunken poet friend is going to be waylaid by many, many men, uh, the hundred men that um, Cyrano himself will fight between Act 1 and Act 2, fight and defeat. Um, so apparently Christian didn't actually find his friend, but he ends up leaving the theater. And that leaves the space open for Cyrano, the Count de Guiche, Valvert, the meddler, Roxanne, Le Bret, the wingman or the best friend of Cyrano de Bergerac. And so all of that is meant to get us into the play and into the characters and setting things in motion. We already know before a few pages that Christian has got a crush on Roxanne. By the end of the first act, we find out that Cyrano has a crush on Roxanne also. Okay, I'm going to stop this little mini lecture right here. That's a good introduction. And I don't think I've made too many mistakes um, so far. Okay, thank you.